I know if you're watching this, you're into music. You also probably watch television occasionally. And you also probably know what this is. It was the amp of the year in 2023. It's the Weem amp. Well, what if you don't have a huge budget or a ton of space? Well, that's where this comes in. This thing has a phono preamp, a DAC, HDMI arc, a remote control, and a headphone amp? Is this better than the Weem amp at a lower price? Jack of all trades or master of none? Let's find out. Well, I was gonna shoot this video, but I guess I'm going to the, uh, going to the grocery store. You ready? All right, so on paper, this thing has a lot to like. It's got a phono stage. It's got a USB DAC input. It's got a coaxial input. It's got an optical input. It's got an HDMI arc input. It's got a headphone output, single-ended. Headphone output balanced 4.4 Pentagon. It's got a remote control. Oof, it's raining. Remote's not that great, but it works. Most importantly of all though, it's coming in at $255. It also has a subwoofer output. So in theory, one could pretty much replace all of their hi-fi stuff with the Lotch G A40, in theory. Now, the other product that probably, it's not even a good comparison because I don't think there's a lot of products out there that have the level of features that this one has at the price. However, the other product that's around $300, let's say around it is $300, is the Weem Amp. That also has an HDMI ARC input. It also has a streamer, but it doesn't have a headphone amplifier. It's good to have choices. Can has a dented bottom, so I can't, can't put it anywhere. Otherwise, I'll just fall off. Dr. Pepper, zero sugar, strawberries and cream. I like so. I'm a soda enthusiast. I've had the A40 for quite some time, but they went out of stock and they are back in stock. I just read the email. They're running a 12% off sale. 12% 12, 12 seems a little bit obscure to me, but anyway, 10% of $255 would be $25. So add another $5. So it's about $30 off. So this is actually $225 right now. I'll put the direct link in the description. I'm not an affiliate with them and they don't have stock on Amazon. So if you buy it, I think it's coming directly from China. $225 for an HDMI amp. Pretty spectacular. It almost seems too good to be true. That can't be right! So from a volume standpoint, as far as the power goes... Puts out enough juice that my daughter just yelled at me to turn it down. Even in my large living room here, which is quite big, uh, able to get enough juice going that it's loud enough. Listen to Bob Marley Redemption song right now. Sounds really awesome. You know, obviously I think it has a lot to do with the new Emotiva speakers because they have the best Twita AMT. $500 for these speakers. I got to do a lot more testing. Your iPad died? You should be more responsible and charge it. Anyway, sorry about that. We had a charging emergency with the iPad. These speakers on this sound great. Now this is $500. So if you get the whole system together, that's $755. The thing about the Emotivas are they remind me a little bit of the Sony. And I think that's the reason why I like the Sony's so much is because they sound like the Emotivas. What? 
Now, I'm not saying you're going to get the same amount of sound quality or center imaging or anything like that. But if you're spending $255 on an amplifier that does everything, that probably means you're on a budget. And if you're on a budget, a lot of times you can get the Sony SSCS5s for $123. So now we have a $225 amplifier on sale plus $123. So that's $325 plus $23. So right at $350, you have an entire system and a headphone amp, HDMI arc, Bluetooth, usable EQ settings, I actually use D-Bass. I like D-Bass. It's kind of like a loudness control, I guess. So far, so good in the living room. This chipset, super cheap. My first experience with it was in the M300 SE DAC headphone amplifier, which is like $115, or it was. I don't know if you can still get it. If it is, I'll link it. If you still can get it, I'll link it in the description. Because it's an excellent DAC and a quite powerful headphone amplifier. It's really solid. So we basically have the M300 SE single-ended inside the LOX GA40. But what about the phono stage? I'm not optimistic about the phono stage, but let's give it a listen. I'll be a son of a gun. Um, so I listened to the ACDC really good recording of For Those About to Rock, which I have been obsessed with lately. Anyway, it's brilliant. Internal phono stage, actually okay. It's It's got to be like a $25 chip or something in there. I compared it to a really affordable prototype mystery phono stage, and it hung with it. I think that's going to be around, I don't know, 80 bucks, 100 bucks, 150 dollars. The takeaway is this phono stage inside is not the greatest, but at 255 dollars all in for this whole package, actually 225 on sale, it's serviceable. Funny thing was, is that I have a very expensive turntable on this and it's hooked up to a pair of fairly expensive Sonus Faber speakers, and it's all right. Listen, if you've made it this far, you probably actually want to know how this thing compares to the Ween amp. Thank you for your patience. The Weem amp has the 3255 chipset from Texas Instruments, which is one of my favorite Class D chipsets. The LOX GA40 has the Mirus MA5332MS chipset which is from Infineon. They claim it doesn't even need a heat sink and that it puts out 165 watts into four ohms. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, probably doesn't. The Weem amp is rated at 60 watts into eight ohms. They both have internal power supplies. They both were able to power the speakers that I had on them and get them to levels that I was uncomfortable with. So power-wise, on paper, Lox G wins, big time. But needing a ton of power is probably not going to apply when you're talking about super affordable amplifiers. Now, the Weem has bass management, which will put a high-pass filter on your main speakers, which means you need even less power to get things loud, especially if you have a subwoofer. Lox G, no bass management. It does have a low-pass filter on the subwoofer output. But to my knowledge, there is no high pass filter for the main speakers. Sonically, and I wasn't just being lazy when I put the Emotiva speakers on the Lox G because I wanted to see if an affordable Class D amplifier would sound good on the Emotivas, which are super clean and clear. A lot of older Class D amplifiers were a little bit emphasized on the top end. What? The good news is the Emotivas sounded great on this. They sounded better on the Weem amp though, more natural. You also have a 10 band equalizer on the Weem. You have a bunch, I think eight different EQ settings and you have tone controls. Can you dial in the Lox G as perfectly as the Weem amp? No, but there are probably three or four baked in EQ settings that is going to 
mitigates any type of amp and speaker combination depending upon what issues you're having. It still sounds good. The Wiim amp sounds more natural. Sounds more like a decent class AB amplifier when comparing this to the Lox G. Lox G still sounds good. Very good, clean, clear. Some people may prefer the Lox G over the Wiim amp. But cutting to the chase, I am really surprised. I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but I still am very surprised on how good the Lox G A40 is and what it tries to do. There is another amplifier out there, an Arillic has HDMI. Doesn't sound remotely as good as the Lox G840. You got a headphone amplifier, which is serviceable again, and it sounds really, really good. Is it gonna drive your $2,000 planar magnetic headphones? Probably, is it gonna sound great? Not as good as, I don't know, two or $300 worth of headphone amplification? But we have to be reasonable here. This is $255, $225 on sale. It drives most headphones. It's gonna drive most speakers. You can put a turntable on it and it sounds good. You can hook your TV up to it. You can hook a subwoofer up to it. And if you choose any of the recent SVS subwoofers, it has an app. So you can dial it in where you're sitting. I'm really blown away at the features, the value for money really you're getting with the Lox G and how well it did against the amp of the year for 2023, which means this is getting an automatic nomination for amp of the year 2024. If you're short on cash and if you're short on space, the A40 from LoxG is going to be able to check off a bunch of boxes. Doesn't have a streamer, but you can always buy a Wii Mini later for 80 bucks and put it in the optical input. They even talk about the USB or the coaxial. Also has LDAC, Bluetooth, amongst Aptex, AAC, all the stuff. Really surprised and happy that this thing exists because at $255, it does everything better than it probably should. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing.